stated what is the difference between a column level constraint and a table level constraint. We'll understand this and then we'll go to primary key constraints. So the topic for today's discussion is difference uh, between column level and a table level constraints. You see this. For this, let me start with an example. For instance, let's uh, talk about the check constraint applied for a column. For this, let me create a table. Let me drop any table I have created earlier for demos. demos. OK. Let me create a table, create table student, and uh, we'll have this uh, name, where care to 10. And uh, we'll have this um, marks column. And this is of type number. We'll have a check constraint here. How will you give the check constraint? Constraint. We'll have uh, two marks here. Say, for instance, uh, we'll call this mark one number constraint. Uh, constraint name is uh, table name underscore top column name underscore check constraint. Check. I can give mark one should be. Say I just have this one condition. Mark one should be greater than equal to zero. I'm not worried about the upper range, but just for learning purposes, we'll have this constraint like this. Next one is mark two number uh, constraint. And then we'll have the student underscore mark two underscore check constraint a check. We'll say mark two should also be greater than equal to. We'll. Uh, Close the parenthesis. We'll create this table. So now what we understand here is uh, when I apply this constraint, um, is this applicable to the name column? No, right? This definition is applicable for the mark one column. And this definition is applicable for the mark two column. To make it uh, here, let me have this mark two should be greater than and equal to zero and uh, mark two should be less than equal to 100. So now I specify that mark 2 should be within this range, whereas mark 1 can be greater than equal to 0 and any upper limit we'll have. Say the user can enter anything here. So now whatever condition I'm, I'm applying is applicable only for the mark 2 column. Is it applicable for the mark 1 column, this condition? No, because this is a column level constraint. When I define it for a column, it, it is applicable only for that column. It will not be applicable for any other column in the table. So such constraints are called column level constraints. And uh, you see now I can insert some values here. Insert into student values. We can insert some names, Satish, and some marks here. Say here I can insert 122 for the second column. Third column I can insert only the valid marks, 54. So. This is allowed. So this means that whatever constraint I applied on the mark two column was applied only for the mark two column, and it is not applicable for the mark one column. So these constraints are called column level constraints. Now we have to see what do you mean by a table level constraint? So for this, what I will do is I will uh, create the same uh, table, and then I will I will uh, convert these constraints to a table level constraint. Then you'll understand the difference. So let me create table student one. And uh, the same uh, constraints back here. Two ten and uh, I love this uh, column mark one to be number. See now I'm not defining the constraint here. I'm going to define it at the table level. We'll see how to do that. And uh, mark two to be of type number. Now I put a comma. So now I have defined all the columns. Next, I define the constraint. Constraint. Constraint name is I'll I'll just give student underscore mark underscore ck. Check. And then I'm going to specify all the conditions here. That is, mark one column should be greater than or equal to zero. And mark two column should also be greater than or equal to zero. And mark two column should be less than or equal to 100 some conditions now i am specifying the constraints that will exist on these two columns at the table level let's uh, close this and then 
uh, name is already. I thought I should drop this one. <laughs> OK, drop table student one. Uh, it is this table in the last class or so. So we'll again go with this uh, thing. So. Create table student one and. Uh, say this is where I specify the table level constraint. Now the table is created. Now we'll go and insert the records again. Let's try insert into student values. The same thing instead of student, I'll use student one table, which which holds a table level constraint. And press enter. Yeah, now the thing is created. Select star from student one. So you see here we have applied the same constraint, but here instead of specifying it at the column level, we first define all the columns and then we give the constraint statement after all the columns are defined. Here we are mentioning it after the definition of the column. So you say it's a table level constraint. So you have to understand the difference here. So you should know what is table level and what is column level. You mention a constraint. After defining all the columns and uh, which can be applied on multiple columns too. one constraint applied on different columns. So that can be called as a table level constraint. So let me uh, go and tell you how to apply a constraint, a table level unique constraint. So let's uh, drop table student and uh, let me create this create table student. Let me clear screen. Create table student and we'll have this ID to be of type. Uh, we'll have directly a name worker to 10. And uh, let, let's say the student has two phone numbers, say phone one to be of type number and uh, phone two to be of type number. Oh, I can go and give a table level constraint here, like uh, mm, constraint. Constraint name is uh, student underscore phone underscore UK. What is the constraint? It's unique key constraint. I'm defining it for both these columns. That is phone one comma phone two. So this uh, is what I'm defining. And uh, let me close this. So what I'm trying to tell you is the combination of phone one and phone two should be unique. That is uh, if the student has two phone numbers, those two phone numbers should not repeat again in the table. Let me insert. We can uh, have name to be some Sam. And say first phone number is 111, second phone number is 2222. So this one is fine. Next, if I try to insert the same phone numbers for another student, Satish, you see unique constraint violated. But this one, you know, if I perform this, say I just have one of the phone numbers to be uh, the same. I just insert like this. This will be allowed. Well, the only thing what it means here is the combination, say 111 and 4-2 should not be repeated like that. Whereas uh, here, this is uh, not the same as this one. So likewise, you can also have uh, 333 and 222, which will be allowed. Our objective is to understand that a constraint can be defined at the table level too. And for that, what is the criteria? You don't define it at the column level. You define all the columns and then you give the keyword constraint, the constraint name, the constraint, uh, whatever constraint you're going to apply, and then the conditions. So that is the difference between the table level and column level constraint. 